Hello everyone and welcome back to Cyberkin Productions. Today I'm going to be reviewing the brand new Companions of the Fourth Doctor set. So let's jump into it. Starting off with the box that has the same colour scheme as the previous B&M sets, with the blue covering the majority of the box with the white for text. The art style is also the same, with a picture of the TARDIS and Gallifrey in text on different segments of the box. The Doctor Who logo is shown at the top, Companions of the Fourth Doctor at the bottom, and some text in the red box states they're in the 5 inch range and part of the Collector series. A large window covers the front of the box and spills over to the right side to get a better view of the figures. Also on the window is the limited edition sticker, which I've always found to be pointless. The left side of the box is a picture of the TARDIS, and the right side is plain, aside from the bubble of text telling you the set includes Sarah Jane Smith, Romana 1, and Romana 2. The back features pictures of the figures in the set, with their names underneath them. The rest is repeated information, aside from some legal gobbledygook in the bottom right. The top has more repeated information, apart from the added character options website URL, and the bottom just features a ton of legal gobbledygook. Now with the box out of the way, let's take a look at the figures. So here they are, Sarah Jane, Romana 1, and Romana 2. And they don't look too bad. Let's put the Romanas aside and get a better in-depth look at Sarah Jane Smith. Starting off, the body is a reuse of Martha Jones from The Last of the Time Lords. The costume is from Genesis of the Daleks slash Revenge of the Cybermen, and isn't that accurate to her outfit as her jacket was open, not closed, but I think it's a pretty good job. Her hair is sculpted decently, with her hair flowing and curling in certain spots, but the back just looks so bland and doesn't look that great. The face sculpt is really bad, it lacks any facial detail whatsoever and barely resembles Elizabeth Sladen. The paint detail on the other hand is good and sharp. Moving down you can see the horrible neck joint which leads to some slight collarbone detailing. The green jacket features some very nice detailing, with the tan paint detail supposed to represent her top underneath. You can also see the open flap, buttons and waist belt. Creasing wrinkling effect is present across the jacket, especially around the belt. There's even some indentations on her back to represent stitching lines. Her arms are covered by the jacket and continue the creasing and wrinkling effect. Her hands are sculpted nicely, with detail for her individual fingers and thumbs. Her waist features her brown belt on top of her camouflage trousers. Creasing and wrinkling effect is present across the trousers and looks fantastic, with the bottom bunching up as if the trousers have been tucked inside her boots. Pockets can be seen below her waist, on her legs and on her rear. Some of them are a little funky though as they don't quite match up with each other. The paint detail on the trousers is done really well, as the camouflage trousers look really authentic and true to her costume. Finally, her brown boots, that feature some really good sculpted detail for her laces and the top of the boot. There is some legal gobbledygook under her boots as well. Turning to articulation, her head can turn 360 degrees, 360 degrees on the shoulder, 360 degrees at the top of the arm, 90 degrees at the elbow, and a 360 degree twist on the wrist. She features a 360 degree waist joint. Her legs pull out to the side, allowing her to do the splits. They can kick out around 45 degrees, bend 90 degrees at the knee, and a final 360 degree twist on the boot. So some really nice articulation for Sarah. So overall, I have mixed feelings for Sarah. The face sculpt is terrible, but the outfit is pretty well done. It may not be 100% accurate, but it really resembles her outfit from Genesis of the Daleks slash Revenge of the Cybermen. In my opinion, Sarah is not bad, but not great either. Moving on to Romana 1, her body is a reuse of Claudia Brown from Prime Evil, the same as Yaz. Her outfit is from the Pirate Planet, and I don't think they did a good job of trying to replicate the outfit. It does match it in some areas, but overall it's wildly different. So far this figure is pretty disappointing. Her hair is sculpted nicely, with detail for her strands of hair, as well as the curls at the bottom. Much like Sarah, it does look a little bland. The face sculpt again is really bad, but better than Sarah's as I can see Mary Tam when looking at certain angles, but it is pretty disappointing. Much like Sarah's, it's lacking face detailing, but the paint detail is very good and sharp as usual. Moving down you can see yet again the horrible neck joint. The pink jacket is very well detailed, with her collar and stitching lines being shown. It also features lots of creasing and wrinkling effect, as does the white top which features some detail for the collar, button join and buttons. The top of her arms continue the pink, which changes to white before her elbow. The arms continue the creasing and wrinkling effect, with her cuffs ending below her wrists. Some sculpting detail for the buttons is shown on the cuffs. The hands are sculpted nicely, with detail for her individual fingers, thumbs and even her nails. Her waist features a white belt, 
which blends into the white trousers. The trousers feature lots of creasing and wrinkling effect, as well as some added pocket detail on her rear that again, like Sarah, doesn't quite match up with each other. Finally, her white boots that don't feature any detail, not even legal gobbledygook. Turning to articulation, her head is unable to turn much due to the collar in her hair. There's a 360 degree turn on the shoulder, 360 degrees at the top of the arm, 90 degrees at the elbow, and a 360 degree twist on the wrist. She features a 360 degree waist joint. Her legs can pull out to the side, allowing her to do the splits. They can kick out around 45 degrees, 360 degrees at the top of the leg, and a final 90 degree bend on the knee. So some really nice articulation for Romano 1. So overall, this figure is pretty disappointing. The face sculpt isn't as bad as Sarah, but it still isn't anywhere near being good. The outfit doesn't really match the episode, except in some areas where it slightly resembles it. In my opinion, this figure isn't great at all. Finally, we have Romana 2. Her body is a reuse of Sarah Jane from the Sarah Jane Adventures. The scarf is a brand new piece, however, which is brilliant to see. Her outfit is from Destiny of the Daleks, and I have to say, this is a really good job. I am astonished how close they got with this. It really does come down to the right pre-existing body, and this was a brilliant choice. Her hair is sculpted well, with the strands of hair flowing down her chest and back. Unfortunately, like Sarah and Romana 1, the hair is a bit bland, but it's better on this one. The face sculpt is good, as I do see Lala Ward, but the facial expression is very strange. Thankfully, some face detail can be seen for dimples and her cheeks, with the paint detail being very good as well. Moving down again, you can see the horrible neck joint, so no improvement there. Her long white scarf is around her neck, which you can take off due to her hair being made from a flexible plastic. Once removed, it does make her hair look a little weird, as if it's floating. The scarf itself doesn't feature much in the way of detailing, apart from it bagging in areas and flowing to the bottom. It is quite finicky to get back on, so I'd advise against taking it off. Her pink coat is sculpted very well, and really looks like drooping cloth. Creasing and wrinkling effect has been applied across the coat, especially on the back, for the coat belt. The coat features lots of painted detail, to represent the various buttons and pockets, as well as the reddish lining at the edge of the coat. The back features some sculpted detail for the aforementioned coat belt. The coat's collar is open, allowing you to see some of her neck and the top. The top itself is very inaccurate to her outfit, as Romano wore trousers with suspenders. They've tried to recreate this using pink and reddish paint to represent the suspenders. The end of the top has been painted pink to try and blend in with the trousers underneath. The overall effect is weird, but they did a good job trying to make it work. Her arms are covered by the pink coat and continues the creasing and wrinkling effect, with some added sculpted detail and reddish paint around her wrist. The hands are sculpted nicely, with detail for her individual fingers and thumbs. Moving further down are her pink trousers, they feature some creasing and wrinkling effect at the bottom, as if they were tucked into the boots. Finally, her glossy brown boots, they feature some sculpting detail for the small belts. There is some legal gobbledygook under her boots as well. Turning to articulation, her head can turn 360 degrees, but takes the scarf with it, so be aware that it is quite finicky. There's a 360 degree turn on the shoulder, 360 degrees at the top of the arm, 90 degrees at the elbow, and a 360 degree twist on the wrist. She features a 360 degree waist joint. Her legs can pull out to the side, but is hindered by the coat. They can kick out around 45 degrees, 360 degrees at the top of the leg, and a final 90 degree bend at the knee. So some really good articulation for Romana too. So overall, this is definitely the best of the three. The face sculpt isn't perfect, and neither is the outfit, but they both resemble what they were supposed to be really well. In my opinion, this is very good. As you can see in the size comparison, Neither of them look out of place when put with the 4th Doctor, or against his enemies. So overall, what do I think to this set? It's not bad. Sarah was okay, the face sculpt was bland, but the outfit is really close and a really good use of a pre-existing body. Romano 1 on the other hand was pretty disappointing. I slightly see Mary Tam in it, but not much. Her outfit barely matches the episode and the pre-existing body just wasn't right. Romano 2 was definitely the best, the face sculpt isn't perfect, but I do see Lila Ward. But again, the facial expression is very weird. The pre-existing body was a really good choice, as it matches her outfit really well. There are some errors like the top, but it's mostly pretty accurate. And like Sarah, is a really good use of a pre-existing body. Aside from the problems with the figures, it's really great to finally get a classic Sarah Jane and both Romanas. Characters I thought we'd never get in a million years. The main problem with this set is the fact it's a B&M exclusive, as fans struggle to get the sets due to the scalpers buying them up and selling for ridiculous prices. So that concludes this review and the end of the B&M 2020 wave. 
If you liked it, please leave a like and tell me what you think in the comments below. If you enjoy Doctor Who content, then also subscribe to not miss any more figure reviews, as well as the Doctor Who fan series that is currently in production. Thank you all so much for watching, and until we meet again, goodbye.